this is the answer sheet to video number 131. Uh, 131 was a pop quiz and um, in a pop quiz I just fill in numbers without explaining how I got them so that you can see if you can follow along. This is the answer sheet to that video. Uh, this is puzzle 71. It's a hard puzzle from Sudoku to Go volume 113 by Soap Opera Digest. So I'm just going to just fill in the numbers in the same order that they were filled in in the in the pop quiz and I'll explain why each number goes where it goes. Now this is a hard puzzle and those of you who are solving hard puzzles now um, probably don't need me to explain how I got each number because some of them are pretty pretty obvious so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain every number like this first number here it's very quite obvious and the first few numbers are Three and six should be quite obvious and if there is some point where you don't understand why I put a certain number in just leave a comment and I can try and answer your questions that one should be very straightforward that one's a little bit trickier we got an eight here and an eight here so we got ghost eights here and an 8 here, so we know that has to be an 8. Okay. Now at this point in the puzzle I did stop and uh, mention that uh, I placed a 5 right here and I mentioned that um, this is both a pretty tricky number to find plus it uh, helped once I placed it it pretty much breaks open the puzzle so that we can finish solving it uh, at this point the puzzle is pretty tricky when I first when I did this puzzle I I looked over it for a while before I found that five and I could not find any other numbers so this is uh, a key number now I'm not going to put the five in right right here yet it, the five goes in here but I want to explain how I got that number I used quadruplets in this box right here in order to find that 5 and let me explain that. Let's just look at every number that's not in filled in yet and see where they can go. First of all a 1 can go in any of those four box cells. A 2 can only go in these two. Then we got a 3 and a 4 already. A 5 can go here, here, or here. A six, there's a six here, there are ghost sixes here, so a six can only go in one of these two cells. We've got a seven and an eight already, and we've got a nine here, so the nine has to be in one of these three. Now, do you see that? Do you see how I got the five there by looking at those numbers? These are actually quadruplets here, and they're a little bit hard to see because all four of those numbers, 1, 2, 6, and 9, um, they can't fit in any of the four cells. If we had a 6 and a 9 here, these, these happen to be 6 and 9 in the solution, and we didn't have a 6 here, and we didn't have a 9 here, and we didn't have a 2 here, we'd have 1, 2, six and nine. Well we do have a six and nine here too so sorry but anyway I think I see, you see my point. It would be easier to see quadruplets here if all four of the numbers could fit in any of the four cells. Now since they can't it's a little trickier to see. Let's look at let's go over those one more time. One, two, six and nine. You see all four of those numbers are constrained to these four cells even though they can't all, all four fit in any of the four cells. One, two, six, nine. 
So those are quadruplets, one, two, six, nine quadruplets, and the only number left and the only cell left is five in that cell right there. When you're looking for tri triplets or quadruplets or any number of um, cells higher than three or four, uh, they can be a little bit tricky. So sometimes it's hard to find them, like in this case. Okay, so after that five, I the, the five was placed there, and that one's pretty straightforward. And then a five was placed there. That's pretty easy to see. Then a 5 was placed here. Again, pretty easy. A 7 was easy to see there. And then we put an 8 here. This one's a little bit trickier. Now, I could I was focusing in other parts of the puzzle. I could have put an 8 right here because we've got an 8 here and an 8 here. So we could see that that's obviously an 8. But I didn't notice that until later. But I knew that the 8, because of this 8 here, 8 has to go in one of these two places, and therefore one of these two places. And again, I didn't see that 8 right off. But how do I know it goes there instead of here? Because there are no 8s up here. Well, we've got an 8 here and an 8 here, so one of these two has to be an 8. And we've got an 8 here and an 8 here, so one of these two has to be an 8. And therefore, we've got what we call double column elimination. Um, in this box, the 8 has to go here. In this box, the 8 has to go here. So that covers both of these columns. And the only column left is this one here. We've got an 8 here already, and we could have placed an 8 there. So that's how we got that 8. Then we got to put a 6 here. And the, the way I got that six was looked at this row right here. We're missing, we were missing two, four, six, seven, nine. Two, four, six, seven, nine. And this column here happens to have two, four, seven, and nine in it, so we know that's a six. Then we looked at this column. I looked at this column here. What's missing? One, three, eight. One, three, and eight. I could, and you see the one and eight here, so that's a three. There's an eight there, so the one goes there. As I mentioned a minute ago, that could have, could have been filled in earlier, but I didn't notice it until until I finished this column here. And a 9 is placed right there. If you look at this row right here, we've got, what do we have missing? 1, 5, 8, and a 9. And there's a 1 there, a 5 there, and an 8 there. So we know that's a 9. Now we have three numbers missing here. And a 2 and a 7 was filled in here. And that's because we've got a, a 3 here. So one of these has to be a 3. That could have been filled in because we've got 3s here. So there's the 3. But even without these, we'd have ghost 3s here. So we know one of these is a 3. And we've got one here and one here. So one of these is a 1. So we know those are 2 and 7. So that's how those were filled in. And we've got an obvious 7 there. And this box was completed with the 9. Uh, this row was completed with the 4. 5 was placed there. What we're missing here is a 1, 5, and an 8. We've got an eight, 1 and 8 here already, so that's a 5. 
can't solve those yet. Then we only have seven and three left there. We've got a three there. So they were filled in. Obvious seven there. Then what's left in this row right here? One, two, three, four, five, nine. Four, five, and nine. There's a four and a nine there. So five was placed there. Then we have four and nine left. We saw I saw the four there. So that's a nine, that's a four. The only thing left here is one and five. There's a five there. And then two is placed here, and a one is placed there because there's a one here, and there are only one, one and two missing in this row. And that too was placed. The only number missing in that row, in that column. That one's pretty straightforward. That one is too. Now we know the one goes there because of this one here. One, one, one. I could have finished the, filled in the eight there, but I didn't. wasn't wasn't watching that. We know this is a one here. And the six was filled in there. That's obvious. Only have two numbers left, three and four there. So those were filled in. Now we can solve the one three twins we have here because of that three. Now what do we have left here? One, six, nine. There's a one and a six there. Now we're missing one and six. There's a one there. Then that eight is obvious. Completed that row. Now we got four and nine missing there. There's a four. And only two numbers missing in this column, two and nine. Only two numbers left in this column and in this box, uh, six and eight, and eight, so. And then there's two numbers left, the six and nine there, so the six goes there and the nine goes there. And that's it. So that's how I solved it. The quadruplets. Um, with this 5 was a bit tricky. This 8 um, was a little tricky too, but we found the double column elimination here. We're able to fill in that 8. So I think that's other than that. Uh, wasn't too bad a puzzle. A little bit time consuming, but not too bad. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that answered some of the questions that you may have had, and uh, I'll talk to you again.